I, I just cannot help by, uh, by sharing the, uh, a very exciting piece of news. So US News released yesterday the uh, 2023 ranking of graduate school. Uh, Purdue Engineering is ranked number four, uh, which is the highest among all the big 10 universities. Right, way to go, congrats. Yeah, so I believe that the detailed ranking uh, is already on the US News website, so take a look. Uh, we have a lot of highly ranked programs across campus. Uh, in addition to engineering and also within engineering, if you look at the, uh, the discipline ranking, I think we're doing extremely, extremely well. So we're standing up here and they said, well, why don't we start? I said, yeah, that's a good idea. And I look at Dung and then I realized that I'm the one that's supposed to be starting. <laughs> it's like, well, come on, let's go. So good morning, everybody, to day two of the symposium, day five of Serious Hell Week. I mean, Serious Cyber Week. Um, uh, again, uh, to, to make a joke of it, but to share, we ran Tuesday, uh, uh, Saturday, Sunday, uh, Tracer Fire with Sandia National Labs, which was a cyber forensics workshop and a challenge uh, for students. Uh, so we had students from uh, multiple departments, undergrads, grad students as well. It was a wonderful event. Uh, and we're going to talk about that uh, this morning. Uh, and then on, um, on Monday, we hosted the Solus uh, Laboratory Platform demonstration, which is our large cyber, cyber physical cyber range uh, that enables us to do uh, pretty incredible uh, research, uh, which is also available to our, uh, to our outside industry partners and other industries. So uh, great. And then the, yesterday, Unbelievable great day. I had I had fun. Uh, I'm always amazed by our students uh, that come up here and present and then at the poster session. And we're going to talk about that in a moment. And now here we are. And then tomorrow, for those of you who are uh, on our board, uh, please touch base with uh, Sean today to make sure you have all the information on the board dinner and the meeting that's going to take place. Um, Okay, so we're gonna start this morning with a few awards. And the first award is, uh, as I mentioned, our cyber forensics competition uh, that, we will, that, that we had. So we're gonna to announce to those winners, they already know it, but we're sharing with you who those winners were. The clowns of CIT. Uh, obviously we don't assign them their team names, they pick their own names. So uh, the, the four students, uh, Ethan Emmons, uh, Christy Gorka, uh, Walid Nassar, and uh, Sasha Thomas uh, did unbelievably well in, in the competition. Um, uh, and not that all of the teams did well, but they were, they were a clear cut winner. Uh, and the professionals from Sandia who, uh, who did the, the final judging, and, and there were uh, many of us who were in the room, uh, each of the teams had to come in after the full day of competition and then present. Uh, as if they were the cyber response team for the organization that had been hacked in the scenario. And they had to present their case, who did it, how they did it, what they did it, what was the, what was the problem and what, and what the recommendation for, what we should have done to protect the network and what we need to do to remediate. And uh, even the, the guys from the Department of Energy had said, I'd hire every one of those kids right now because they nailed it. Yeah, they were nailed it. And they were uh, so weird. I was I felt like a proud father because they they uh, they were getting so much praise from the Department of Energy uh, cyber response folks teams. So congratulations to the clowns of CIT. By chance, are any of you here in the room this morning? I know it's early and you students don't typically like really early morning. So, OK, so uh, congratulations to each of them. <clears throat> Uh, then yesterday we had the poster preview and then the opportunity to go down for the poster awards. Uh, we had <clears throat> from our part, our strategic partners, we grabbed uh, four judges uh, and then had one faculty who had no students in the in the uh, in the poster session uh, and, and serve as our five judges. Uh, look at it. It was a very difficult. There was. Uh, 
not quite fist fights ready to break out in the judging room, but there was there was disagreement on which was the best and which was the second best, and they negotiated down. Uh, but at the end, they were all very happy that yes, there were a lot of great posters. That was the consensus: is that there were a lot of great research projects. But we did come to the uh, to the agreement on what the top three to be awarded were. Uh, I do believe that some of those students are here. So it, uh, when we when I announce your name, if you are here, please come up, okay? So um, uh, in the third place was the uh, GAN inspired defense against backdoor attack of federated uh, learning systems. Uh, uh, the professor, um, uh, the PI investigator Feng Li, also Zhu Zhu from IUPUI. Uh, and uh, the students, uh, oh, it's very small on here. There we go. Uh, Agadevin, uh, Sundar, uh, and uh, Cheng Chou Zhong. So if uh, Agadevin, who, who uh, was here yesterday to present and the poster, so congratulations on naming the, the third place poster at the poster session. We can clap. Uh, second place was on the analysis and observability of a networked competitive multivirus SIR model. Uh, the professor PI is uh, Philip Pari and uh, uh, the students are listed there, but uh, Xin Yu Zhang uh, was the student who presented and post and had the poster. So uh, uh, Xin Yu, I actually thought I saw you here. Or must not, okay. Uh, congratulations to, uh, to that team. And our first place poster winner, and by the way, they get cash prizes for this. So, uh, so uh, they're, uh, at least they'll be able to have extra pizza this weekend. Uh, so uh, in our first place was the GC Lite, hiding software, data, and computed values using lightweight primitives. Uh, Professor Mike Atala, uh, but the student uh, that presented was uh, Shoab Khan. Shoab, are you here? Shoab, come on up. <clears throat> Uh, Professor Atala, are you here this morning? Okay, not. opportunity yeah tell us what you're looking for there are lots of people here looking for very bright talent all right so um so my area of expertise is uh, it's an intersection of um of privacy security and ml so some of the things that you that that we've done here in this project they have direct applications to privacy preserving machine learning and data analysis so if you're looking for someone who works at this intersection please uh drop me an email at my email address uh, that's Khan180 at purdue.edu. Um, once again, it's Khan, uh, that's K H A N, 180 at purdue.edu. Um, I'd be delighted to hear from any one of you guys. All right, thank you so much. Appreciate it. Congratulations. If you don't have that and you are interested in learning more, you can always reach out to any of the serious staff and we'll be, ha we'll be happy to, to connect you. If you want to more, know more about that research, we can also get you in contact with the Professor Atala as well. Uh, our next award uh, is the Diamond Award. Do you, do you want to talk about the Diamond Award? You got it. Okay. So, uh, so it's my uh, honor and privilege, privilege to announce the Diamond Award uh, both for both 2021 and 2022 this year. So the Diamond Award is to a student that most exemplifies the diamond in the rough transition uh, through outstanding academic achievement and slash or research excellence. Uh, since we did not uh, give out the, uh, the Diamond Award last year, so we decided to uh, you know, award, uh, make, uh, give one, uh, you know, one Diamond Award for the year 2021. And also we have our uh, you know, winners for 2022. Uh, so we receive uh, a number of uh, nominations from faculty, from uh, you know, uh, researchers across campus nominating their uh, students. So we, we require that the students are affiliated with Sirius 
and also going through you know this transition you know starting as a student and gradually learning and doing research and becoming you know a mature researcher engineer practitioner so that is the uh, kind of the typical trajectory trajectory that we are looking for so the selection uh, of the diamond award winners uh, is always a difficult task so it took us quite some time uh, to actually review all the nominations and determine the winner. And for that reason, I do have to uh, kind of apologize for, do, we don't have that play. <laughs> Yeah, so because since the you know we, we do have that the certificate, we, we would like to customize it and we we uh we did not even have time to actually send the names of our winners um you know to the vendor, right, to produce the uh the plague in time. Uh so I have to pre-apologize for that. So when I uh, uh announce the winner, uh if the winner is in the audience, please come up to the podium and then we will just take a picture, shake hands, and then we're gonna ship or you know, send uh the yeah, later. Um, so without further ado, the uh, 2021, so that is last year, uh, Diamond Award uh, goes to, uh, well, I watched Oscar on Sunday, so let me, here you go. Uh, <laughs> so uh, Dr. Tian Hao Wang. So Tian Hao uh, already received his PhD last year in computer science, and he's currently an assistant professor of computer science at the University of Virginia. Uh, he's nominated by his advisor, Professor Ninghui Li. Uh, Tian Hao's PhD research is on data collection under the local differential privacy model. So differential privacy, or DP, is a rigorous privacy notion that has been widely accepted as the de facto standard for data privacy. So in recent years, uh, there, also, there are also techniques for satisfying differential, uh, differential privacy in the local setting which is called LDP, local differentiation, uh, differential privacy, that further enable the gathering of statistics while preserving privacy of every user without relying on trust in a single data curator. So that's the unique capability. So Tian Hao has done foundational work uh, in the domain of LDP, developing techniques to analyze and optimize the utility of LDP protocols with high impacts in both research and practice. So I would like to, uh, I guess uh, Tian Hao himself is not here, but uh, I would like to uh, invite the Professor Ning Hui Li up to the podium so that we can congratulate him for graduating uh, our awardee last year. Um, so let me uh, announce the 2022 Diamond Award winners, and you may notice that the, I use plural form, so there are actually two winners for this year. So the first winner is Noor Jabber uh, from ECE. Noor is a PhD candidate in the School of ECE, and uh, he is expected to graduate in the summer of this year, and he's nominated by his co-advisor, Professor Rupsha Samantha and Malin Kukarni. Uh, so his PhD focuses on formal method and program synthesis. And moreover, as described by uh, his advisor, uh, he, from difficult beginning through a long but very successful career here at Purdue, all with the backdrop of numerous challenges coming from technical, personal, and family aspects, Noor exemplifies the quality of a Diamond Awardee who has overcome adversity, not just to arrive at Purdue literally, but to thrive at Purdue. So, uh, Are you? Oh, here, please uh, come up to the podium and uh, yes. Oh. All right, because of the uh, 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 kind of PowerPoint malfunctioning, I already, uh, you already see the, the, the second winner, of course, in no particular order uh, of uh, the Diamond Award for this year. Uh, so it goes to Arvind Sundaran. Arvind is a PhD candidate in the School of Nuclear Engineering, and uh, he's expected to graduate also this summer. He's nominated by his advisor, Professor Hani Abdel-Khalik. 
Uh, Arvind's PhD has focused on the development of new paradigm for intelligent embedding in industrial control systems to enhance the security of ICS. Uh, he has been recognized by the School of Nuclear Engineering and awarded the inaugural prestigious Graduate Research Recognition Award earlier this month. Uh, finally, Arvind's work has served as the basis for a uh, NSF i Award for research commercialization, where he currently serves as the entrepreneurial lead of this effort. So congratulations to Arvind. Uh, to oh. Thank you. And our final award uh, as uh, that we have today is every year uh, we give out a serious pillar award. The idea being is that somebody goes above and beyond to prop up serious. Uh, so we have taken people from staff. We've gotten people from uh, our industry partners, those who are outside, those who have found a way uh, to help us along the way that we may not have seen uh, as possible. Uh, our award winner um, is is has been long dear to Sirius for all that he has, has done for us. So as most of you know, Sirius is a standalone institute at Purdue. We're not part of one, any department, so we're not funded by the university. We have a pseudo consortium uh, that has our strategic partners, many of them in the audience today, uh, who provide a small amount of money that provides just enough that we can all, all keep the lights turned on, provide some money to our researchers to do, uh, to do our faculty to do research and to support our students. So the support of industry is 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 extremely important to Sirius. I started at Sirius being the internal person that was trying to build these relationships, uh, now managing director. Sean Huddy over here now has that role to engage with industry. But but this is a very large industry. One person really can't do it. Uh, I can tell you that because I was in that role for a long time. And so when you find somebody else that can assist you in this area, it, it's, a, it's a big deal. And Sirius has grown quite a bit over the last few years uh, because we've had great uh, partners, but also because we've had uh, great help in identifying organizations that would benefit from a relationship. So Eric Woods is a senior director in the Office of uh, Industrial Partnerships at Purdue and has been with Purdue for nine years. Uh, he started as a corporate relations director for a, for a department, for a college. And in the past, if we go back to when he was first hired, uh, corporate relations and advancement and development people were tied to their department. So when a company said, I'm interested in talking to you about cybersecurity, that person's motivator was, who is in my department that I can introduce you to? Sirius is interdisciplinary. We go across every boundary on campus and we bring together everybody that works in this area. Uh, when Eric learned what we were and he said, well, we don't really have incentives for me to bring people to you unless they're working with this. But if somebody calls and said they want to learn about cybersecurity, how stupid it would it be for me to only introduce them to the people that are in my department? So he said, hey, I'm doing fine. My bosses are okay with me doing this, but I'm going to take care of the outside industry when they say they're interested in cybersecurity. So from the day one on campus, Eric started making sure that we met everybody that was coming to campus that he'd met that said, hey, we've got an interest in cybersecurity. So over his tenure here, there's been a couple of transitions of his department. He ended up then running corporate relations and told all of the other corporate relations people who were tied to their own departments, hey, I, yes, we want you to take care of engineer. We want you to take care of computer science. We want you to take care of Craner business. You, you have your assignment. But if somebody says cybersecurity, you have to call Sirius because they know the people who can help regardless of the department. And at the end, we're corporate relations here to help industry engage in Purdue. And we're not serving industry if we say, well, I'll introduce you to the one person that's doing cybersecurity in my department. So Eric changed the culture within Purdue development. Others took note that well, duh, this makes an awful lot of sense. <clears throat> so they actually changed the entire system based on what Eric had been doing. And now corporate relations developers are not tied to a department. They're tied to a theme. Um, Eric's current assignment 
is General Motors. So if General Motors says, I want to talk cybersecurity, he knows a call. If they want to talk, hey, I want to talk to guys about mechanical engineering, uh, hiring an iron type, uh, deep, deep mechanical engineer, he can do that. All these people have that. But as we know, is cybersecurity is a cut across. So nearly every one of these corporate relations directors eventually hears, yes, we're in this industry, but we're interested in cybersecurity. So Eric's initiatives over the nine years completely changed the system of how Purdue does development and corporate engagement. He has been instrumental in bringing several of our partners introductions and continues today, even though his assigned uh, category is not cybersecurity or computing. So he's a guy who continues what he's been preaching for nine years, that it doesn't matter what, where, where our assignments are in Purdue. If we want key engagement, we need to figure out what's important to the industry partner and make sure that they are leveraged, they can leverage the benefit of that's on campus. This most recent engagement with this is that because of his long history of understanding what we do and being interdisciplinary, he sat on our on our committee to help hire Sean uh, and uh, had to do it during the pandemic when it did not fit well, uh, gave up a lot of personal time to be able to consist uh, consistently help us. So while going forward, I actually believe that we will have less interaction with Eric as we have the last nine. This is the perfect opportunity to recognize all that he has done truly as a pillar to prop us up. Eric, will you come forward? Eric Woods. You owe me beer after that, nice things I just said. Thank <laughs> you. 